Hey everybody, Barry here again. It's time to get these heads finished up, so I'm gonna go ahead and lap the valves and then clean them up and paint them and hopefully they'll be purple by the time I'm done here. We can see that all of our ports are cleaned up and all matched. So now we can go ahead, lap the valves, get that all finished. It's not gonna take a lot to clean this up, just a little bit of wire wheel work here and then I can begin the taping process going around where the gasket flanges are. Same on this side. And then give her a couple of good healthy coats of purple. First thing I like to do when I'm cleaning up valves is to have them nice and clean. Make sure there's no contaminants on there. Nothing that's going to make our mating surface uneven so we get leaks and we get low compression. And clean up the face of these valves here. So I'm just going to grab a valve really quick and just show you. So here we can see it's a whole lot nicer and cleaner looking. There's no damage on the valve face down here. The seat looks great. It's just going to take a little bit of lapping to bring it right back to new. The valve's cleaned up, lapping compound is here. Let's kind of clean this up a little bit so there's not so much metal and stuff hanging around in there. That's nasty. Head cleaned up pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and lap all the valves now. There's lots of ways to do this and lots of different tools. But what I normally like to do, take a little bit of this goopy, sandy, oily stuff. Just put it on the face of the valve where it's going to be meeting the seat. Make sure it's evenly covered. Put it in the valve guide. Make sure not to get any of this on the valve stem here or in the guide because it's basically like sandpaper. As you're spinning it, it'll wear out your valve guide really fast. So we'll pop that one in. And you can see that there's lots of it starting to seep out around the seat. What I like to do, this under here so we can see it. I like to just take my drill, chuck it onto the valve. Doesn't have to be on there tight, just enough to get the drill to clamp onto the valve. Then, you just take your time. And then go back and forth and then change direction. You can do that a couple times back and forth. Don't just pull on it and hold it in place because as you're spinning, it's gonna flick the valve grinding compound away from the seat. So let's just unchuck this really quick. So 
best way to do is just take the valve and go in and out with it like this. That way you can see it pulling more compound back in on the face. So let's pull this one out and see where we are. And we can see here, there is some pitting on the valve, but that's probably from the DOD lifters being collapsed and probably not opening all the way or closing all the way, a little bit of corrosion in there. The inside of the engine is spotless, so I'm not really sure what's doing that. But I'm gonna go ahead and lap it some more. I don't think we're gonna have any issues with this. I'll go on and lap all the rest of the valves. The seat itself looks fine, really nice and even. Nice gray contact pattern, so we know that the valve seat isn't warped or anything. There's still some compound left on there, but nothing serious. Here we go, looks really good. I went ahead and lapped all the valves. No sense putting it on a video as I already have like two or three videos on doing it anyway. So here we go. Seats all look good and even and uniform. Make sure you clean this up really, really, really well because this is sand. And you don't need that inside your engine where the valves are, where the guides are. Pistons, rods, bearings, all that stuff. None of that wants sand in it. So make sure it's really, really clean. I like using this stuff. Carquest brake cleaner. It's part numbers right here, 1005C. That's wicked stuff. It's not flammable. It's like power washer in a can. And it dissolves instantly. So it makes it nice and clean. You'll see me use this stuff in like every video because it's amazing. After I use this and put a rag over it and clean it all up really nice. I'll blow all the loose stuff out with shop air just to make sure there's nothing left in here at all. Looking good. One head all put together. Had a little bit of trouble with the uh, compressor here. I don't know why I kept wanting to kind of go all over the place on me, but probably got something to do with that. It was kind of twisting and wanting to spit the spring out. So that's no fun. But I'm gonna go ahead and paint this head. And then while I'm waiting for paint to dry on this one, I'll go and assemble the other head. Coat number one is done. It's turned out nice. This purple lays down really, really nice. It's even a good reflection in it. So both heads have a coat of paint on them. This is the silver that I laid down first to get a good solid base for the purple. So this is gonna go purple in a minute when that dries, but I'm going to lay this over to one side and clean this up and paint it. This is our front cover with the cam sensor that we need. So I'll go ahead and paint that and probably the valley cover too.
I got some parts painted today. This gotta go purple. This gotta go purple. Timing cover gotta go purple. The heads need like two more coats and then some clear coat because we want it to be nice and shiny like this. That's a big difference in shine with a bit of clear on it. Just realized I forgot to paint another valve cover. Let's get this one painted up. Much better. So I think that pretty much covers what I'm gonna do for today. The heads are purple. Everything else got a coat of silver on it and I'm gonna let it all cure for the night just to make sure that the paint is cure. I'm not gonna have any lifting or anything like that. So tomorrow I'll go ahead and paint everything else purple. Get a couple more coats on it during dinner time. I'll put a coat on maybe after work, something like that. And then I'll go ahead and bolt the heads on because they're ready to go. This is getting dangerously close. When my cam gear comes in, I'll be able to pretty much bolt everything back on, hook up a fuel system really quick, haul the harness off the rat rod, and I'll be able to get it running like it is on the stand. So it's kind of exciting. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day.